Hello, I'd like to welcome everyone to the 2022 Internship Program Showcase. So what we're going to do tonight is um, kind of go over our internships that we're going to be posting for next season and then um, talk with some former interns who have maybe stayed here, they've moved on, listen to their stories, what they had from their internship experiences and kind of shed a little bit of light on our program. So first and foremost, I am um, just going to share my screen and show you guys a little bit about our internship program for um, 2022. So they posted on Monday. So they did go live on Monday and that's up on our website. And that's just twinsbaseball.com slash job opportunities. If that happens to take you to our normal, just twins um, page, you scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on job opportunities and it'll take you right there. So they were posted on Monday. They'll be posted up until October 30th, but we always say apply early because we will start the process, you know, in a couple of weeks going through resumes and, and everything along those lines. So you can see we have um, 45 internships this year, and that would be about 35 unique positions. So you can see when you go to our website, you'll be able to see the internship, you see how many positions they are, you'll see the time frame. So like for Authentics, you can see it's January through November. Uh, most of our internships are you know this long because our season isn't just a short little season. We don't have summer internships. Most of them go the full length of our season, hopefully deep into October. Um, unfortunately, not this year, but you know we always hope for the best. Um, here you can see just a sampling of the internships that we have. So I always tell people look through every single internship. You might not even know we have this department or these positions. So um, I also tell people go ahead and apply for as many as you would like, but please don't just apply to them all because um, to me it, it means you haven't really taken a good look at the internships and just kind of fishing. So I always say pick your top three if you are going to apply for multiple internships. Um, if you do have any questions, you can always contact us um, at HR support at twinsbaseball.com. That's just our normal standard HR box. We can answer any questions you have regarding internships, full-time positions, anything along those lines. So reminder how to apply is just at our website and you just click in there and we can take care of you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn it over to Andrew Halverson and he will kick off the showcase. Thank you, Holly. I asked some good advice there. My name is Andrew Halverson. My current role is director of broadcast with the Minnesota Twins. I'm down here in the Treasure Island Radio, Radio Network studio at Target Field, and I'm drinking my caribou coffee. Thank you, Kayleen. Uh, this group here that we have today, uh, part of the conversation that we're going to discuss is, you know, we usually have an annual career fair where we receive, receive a lot of good questions from potential candidates. Uh, a number of us also interview a lot of candidates to be hired with the Minnesota Twins. Uh, so we're gonna go through some of those questions that we get asked during the interview process just to help you give a le leg up on, on what to expect when applying or when they're seeking a job with the, in this organization or elsewhere. I'm gonna go through and introduce this group, uh, ask them a little bit about their experiences as a twin, a twin turn. Yeah, that's what they call them. Uh, and then we'll go through and ask a couple specific questions of each individual. And then if you have questions at all, We'll take them at that time or we can continue talking. This is a, a pretty good group. Uh, one, you'll, you'll notice from this group that uh, all of them have a tremendously positive outlook, uh, but they're also really confident in, in who they are. And that's what makes them unique. And I think that's going to show through in some of this con conversation is their perspective and, and what they know they can bring to the table. Uh, so with that, I'm going to introduce uh, our, our fir first uh, panelist, uh, Kate Townley. She's been here the, the longest tenured one class of 2005, a director of baseball administration for just over 16 years now. Kate, how's it going? It's going well. Thanks for dating me. I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Holly just went through some awesome opportunities. There are so many here for the upcoming season. Uh, tell us a little about your, your internship days when there was uh, seven to 10, 10 of those positions. Yeah, there, was a, there was a few less uh, internship roles, but back when I started, it was the Oregon Trail. We had to forge some rivers and 
uh, he could uh, die of a snake bite. But um, back then it was, um, I, I would actually say I had a unique experience and other some other interns that we've had is that I started in the ticket sales and service uh, internship role. And that's actually where I was hired initially as an intern. And then um, that year, the baseball operations department hadn't hired an intern for uh, for their season and we needed some help with the June amateur draft. And so they pulled me up from the ticket sales department and asked me to help out with um, the June amateur draft. And so I uh, was fortunate enough to kind of stay in the baseball operations department um, throughout the rest of the year. And even more fortunate at the end of that, even though there was only about eight people in that department at the time, there happened to be an opening in uh, scouting administrative assistant. So I, I went um, from being a ticket sales and service intern, folding a bunch of papers and doing a lot of ticket sales type stuff to working on the June amateur draft and then got, uh, had an opening in the, at the end of that year, which was, which was great. And now fast forward, as you said, 16 years and here I am. Who was our first pick that year? God, man, why are you going to throw a curveball? All right, sorry, I'll move on. <laughs> All right, was, let's introduce. I was busy making sure the coffee was hot. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's introduce uh, Sierra Bailey next. Uh, Sierra's class of uh, 2010 and marketing and promotions director to St. Paul Saints for almost nine years. Uh, Sierra, how was the first year as being a tw twins, uh, being part of the Twins franchise? Great. <laughs> is that a question i don't know a lot of it had to do with the pandemic for it being different for so much but it was good i think it was it was really awesome that we've always had like our brand of like fun is good yeah there's baseball going on but that's not the main thing going on but now we actually have like not saying the baseball wasn't good before because it was but we didn't get fans because of that necessarily they came for the fun affordable family atmosphere now we actually have like baseball fans who are like oh my gosh, I want to see Brent Rooker, like, because he's going to make it, he did, eventually, and I just want to see him before he gets there, and I can pay $6 for a ticket, and then I'll have to pay a little bit more when I go to the Twins to see him, you know, shine at Target Field, but it was, it was great, like, it was a learning year for all of us, um, but I think it all went pretty smoothly. Uh, definitely, we enjoyed the partnership as well. You were interned the first year at Target Field, and for one of my all-time favorites, uh, Sam Henschen in game presentation. Uh, t tell me a little bit about that experience. Yeah, for sure. I, it was awesome. Like, so I'm going to back up really quickly. I really wanted to work for the Twins when I was like in college, and I couldn't get an interview. And so I was like, how can I make my resume better? Oh, I'll work for another baseball team. So I interned with the Saints first, and that's what turned me on to the whole promotional side of things. Like, as a, I've always grown up loving sports, but like going to a game and seeing all the like things that help entertain the fans while they're there, that's what I fell in love with. And then to be able to, it actually worked the next year I was able to intern for the twins in like the game presentation side. And it was so awesome and so fun. And the first year at Target Field, like I, honestly, I had nothing to do with opening the ballpark, but it was like, you felt like we were trailblazing a little bit as to like, this is what like, maybe this intern would be doing now because it's not at the Metrodome, it's at Target Field now. So I feel super blessed that that was the year that I got to do it. But I can tell you, you're still talked about here at Target Field, so you made quite the impression. Uh, Hopefully in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to uh, Kayleen Alexson, uh, currently Director of Brand Experience at Caribou Coffee. Uh, Kayleen, you were also intern here at 2010 along with uh, Sierra. Uh, and you, uh, you subbed for her a couple of times, right? And it was a really big year. It was a great group of people. And there was one weekend that Sierra was out of town. So they let me slide over and put a headset on and do a game presentation. But I was an intern in corporate partnerships at the time, which I think is now called brand partnerships. But there was one weekend where I got to be Sierra and it was wonderful. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your experience with the brand partnerships. Obviously it's, uh, it's paid off now in yeah. your current role as well. Yeah, so I guess zooming back a little bit, um, similar to Sierra, I, I I knew I loved sports. I didn't know I necessarily wanted to work in sports until I got involved at the University of Minnesota and, and internships there. And so I was a community intern for, I'm going to date myself a little bit, I guess, too, when they were bringing football back to campus and opening up TCF Bank Stadium. So I, inter uh, I interned with the athletics team there and then um, interviewed with that experience for the Twins and actually had a phone interview with Holly. Um, probably on a Blackberry or something. I don't know. I just remember I hung up on her and I somehow still got the job. So 
Holly was my phone screen and was gracious enough to give me another shot when I hung up with her um, uh, during my phone screen. But yes, yeah, so I was an intern in 2010. Um, and then uh, at the end of the season, um, left for about a month and then was fortunate enough to come back and join uh, the brand partnerships team full time in a client services role um, and spent another season, seven seasons with the, with the team um, in brand partnerships in a couple of different positions. So all in, I was with the twins for eight years. Um, and then about three and a half, almost four years ago, um, I flipped to the brand side um, and I've been with Caribou Coffee since then. Um, and I made the, the the switch to kind of being the, the person that is on the other side of the phone or the other side of the table um, as I was when I was working for the team um, and I was managing all of the corporate sponsorships for Caribou. So the official coffee of the twins. Thank you, Drew, for your beverage of choice tonight. I appreciate it. Um, official coffee of other sports teams and towns, the Vikings. And then my role has um, evolved since then a bit to include some of our communications and social media um, and other things, but uh, partnerships still being a piece of it. So I still touch the team um, in the relationship in some small ways and make sure that um, everybody who is on camera is drinking a cup of caribou coffee like <laughs> my friend Drew. <laughs> well, the caribou is lucky to have you. We miss having you around here. Uh, made quite the impact in, in your uh, eight years with the organization. Uh, last but not least, and not, not a director, but uh, Kobe Allen, who was this year's class uh, for or in, Twin Turns. Kobe, how are you doing tonight? Oh, man, I'm doing fantastic. Thanks, Drew. <laughs> Kobe, you're wrapping up. Uh, you, you, your internship goes until December. Tell us about your experience here uh, with the most recent internship class. I mean, just absolutely above expectations. Like, I just got blessed with the best manager of all time, Chelsea Falzone, and I, I'm from San Francisco, so when I first got here, I had my badge. Chelsea told me to go explore everything in the ballpark. So since she told me that day, I've met pretty much every single person at Target Field. I've tried to talk to everybody. I mean, it's just been the best experience. The community is great. The work is fun. I got to do things that I never thought I'd ever do in baseball, and I feel like I'm in the big league. So that's pretty much how my experience is going, just above and beyond. Kobe, I'm going to put you on a spot a little bit because you always have a smile on your face and you just mentioned that you're always connecting with people. I see you doing not only your responsibilities, but other people's jobs, too. Where does that perspective, that mentality come from for you? Um, I'm just a really competitive person, first of all. Like I played baseball my whole life, so I'm just always like trying to compete. So I try to do as much as possible. But then also it's from my dad. Like my dad told me he's like, there's no job bigger than you, so do everything. It doesn't matter if you have to take out the trash or if you have to talk to the president. Like every job is valuable, every job is important. So no matter what I do, I try to do it at the highest level. And I think that's what's given me the ability to make connections with everyone in the office. Like, I mean, I think about Deb, she works in the um, suite level. She like sits there and uh, she helps people like go to the right suite. and. She always sees me walking down the hall and she just gives me a hug every time. So it's just like people like that at Target Field and that's what makes the experience so great, you know? That's an awesome mentality. Uh, and I ask you that because you have made a really good impression this year too. And, um, you know, hopefully it, your career will continue there, not the organization in, in a similar field. Uh, Kobe, I get a lot of, when people apply, a lot of out-of-staters out of from, you know, different states across the country and they they ask, you know, how, what does housing look like? How can I make, make it work? First and foremost, you know, why the twins organization from California? And then how did the housing work out for you? Okay, good question. So why the twins organization? So like I said, I played college baseball and I've had the opportunity to create really good mentors that have been in the baseball game, been in major league baseball. And um, one of my mentors is Bobby Evans, old GM for the giants. And when I told him that I wanted to work in major league baseball, he gave me a list of, teams that he thought were great organizations and number one on that list was the twins and he just said that it's a community where like when you go to the twins organization you know that it's a family it's a really good team and so that's what draw me to apply for a job for the twins to be honest and then like moving here wise um I mean I just googled like cheapest place to live in Minnesota and, and then my mom like vetoed that and then she took all control and she was like, now you're going to live here so you can walk through the skyway and get to work. I was like, mom, what's a skyway? So, and then Chelsea helped me. And I also like called a few people that lived in Minnesota. So they let me know like what areas are good, but to be honest, it wasn't that hard. I moved in the middle of the pandemic. So 
there's a lot of open houses or open apartments to move to. But hopefully if I'm here again next year and an intern moves away from, or is coming from California, coming from a different state, like just call me and I'll help you out. Like I'll let you know, like, oh, well, don't go there. or This is a nice place. And your manager will help you too. Like you're going to get a lot of help. So don't worry. I know Holly sets up a Facebook group and I know some interns have yeah. connected on that group and, and have, have found housing together to kind of help offset the costs and that sort of thing too. Uh, Kobe, you know, you, you've been a, a coach of a baseball team already, uh, director of a first base foundation. Um, as, as a younger individual, what does it mean to you to be called a leader? Mm, good question. Uh, it means a lot. And well, the way I see leadership is kind of different from other people, I would say. Like some people think like being a leader is being all talkative and all hoorah or, you know, the guy that tries super hard, but for me, like a leader is someone that makes everyone around them better. So that's how kind of how I base my leadership off of. Like when I walk into a room, I try to make sure that I'm making everyone in that room better. Like if I'm on the baseball field, I'm making sure I'm making my teammates better. If I'm in a meeting, I'm making sure I'm making the people we're meeting with better and my teammates better. And if we have like a pregame person, like I'm a leader by the way I communicate with them, make everyone feel comfortable and bring the best out of them. So that's what leadership is to me personally. All right. So a bunch of people on this webinar are watching is potentially going to be interns in 2022. What's your advice to someone coming in for the next class, having just gone through it? All right. My advice is number one, like hard work, effort, preparation. Just if you do that, like you'll be fine in the internship. Um, number two is show up early to everything and like kind of have like a little competition in your head. So for example, like, I don't know if our VP Nancy knows this, but I try to beat her at every single meeting we're in so that I'm there, I'm like smiling, I'm fired up, I'm ready so that she knows that like, you know, I'm prepared, I'm gonna give her the effort and that I'm gonna try my best in that meeting. So try to set goals for yourself like that. And then also like make friendships with the other interns and people in the office. Like I came from California, I knew zero people in Minnesota and the other interns are super awesome. They're, like, we became really good friends. We created group chats and we go to St. Paul Saints games and you know explore Minnesota. And it's just made my experience so much better. And then also lastly, just ask questions. Like if you need help, just ask questions. Like you're an intern, no one expects you to know all the answers. They just want you to work hard. So. If you're having trouble, don't complain. Just tuck your chin down and grind and ask for help and your experience will be really good. Awesome. Thank you, Kobe. That was good stuff. Thank you very much. Kayleen, you mentioned this when we talked about your internship that you did an internship and then you had a, a brief hiatus and then came back for a full-time position. We get, receive a ton of uh, applicants for our intern positions and then even a smaller amount get, you know, get the job and then a smaller amount get hired on from there. I get asked this during the interview process, which is a really good question from usually one of our top candidates, you know, what sets apart a good intern from maybe one that underperformed for you, you clearly overperformed, you got hired. What is it for you that you think made you stand out during your intern year? It's a good question. And I know it's asked a lot in terms of, you know, what do I need to do to extend my internship and continue on within the organization? And I think, um, you know, and looking back to, you know, my internship year, I think it was very clear in my mind and, you know, probably Holly telling us too, but like there are the front offices of professional sports teams are smaller than you realize. And mm -hmm. I think they're, um, you know, especially a culture like the twins, there's a lot of people that stay in their roles um, for a while. So I don't ever remember having the mentality that I was trying to prove myself or that my internship was this kind of 12 month interview for a full-time role. I think it sure. was pretty clear in my mind that whatever I was going to be doing next was going to be based on the experiences that I had, what I learned, the people that I met, and it was probably going to be somewhere else. And I think kind of having that mentality from the beginning of my internship is probably why um, I was a, probably an easy call or, you know, uh, proved myself as, as someone that made sense to stay on full-time um, because I spent so much of my time just being a sponge and I connected with, you know, to echo Kobe. I mean, I think just having conversations, getting to know people outside of your department, um, other departments. And then in my role specifically, we work with all of our partners at Target Field. Um, and so, you know, getting to know the businesses of sponsors, getting to know other relationships. And I think 
you know, knowing that that was going to be probably my next step was based on a connection that I was making. Um, I just was a sponge and learned. And then um, I left for about a month, you know, thinking that I was on to kind of the next, the next thing and applying for different internships and different jobs. And um, a position did open up in corporate partnerships. And I was lucky enough to come back and be able to apply for it. Um, but I think, you know, turnover and those positions being available, um, part of it's timing, right? You know, I, I lucked out <laughs> a bit of a position being available a month after my position was open. That's not always the case, but I do know of other people, whether it's with the twins or other organizations, because of those connections you made when you were there, um, it's easy for you to be a call um, or be on, on their mind if a position does open months or years down the road. Um, so my goal was just always to continue those relationships. And, you know, again, echoing Kobe, I think the twins is a unique place and maybe not that unique. There's probably other great cultures like this in sports, but I still 11 years removed from my internship, you know, have with the person that hired me. Um, I see guest services, um, uh, men and women that I, I see at games that I still hug that I remember from 2010, 2011. And I think that those people that you meet in the way that you approach that, that, that short 12 months that you have, or eight months or nine months, um, stays with you for a lot longer. So I guess my advice would be to not um, ever go into an internship acting like you're needing to prove or it, it's an interview for the next. Um, just soak it in and, and take all the experiences that you can because um, that's going to be your best shot at uh, kind of uh, launching into whatever is next, whether it's with the organization or not. Uh, that's, that's awesome. I mean, one of the first things I think about you is is how mu much of a connector you are, both internally, externally. You're always building these relationships in a positive way. Um, you know, one thing that I get asked a lot in the interview process is how can I make my resume stand out? Uh, you have some great volunteer experiences. Uh, one thing that I do sometimes in the resumes is, is I start at the bottom because those are, you know, we're going to get a bunch of applicants that have, you know, 4.0 or near that. 3.5 GPA, all this stuff. But at the bottom is really where I can learn a little bit about their personality and see what they're invested in. For you, what what do those volunteer experiences help you help you with? Uh, well, I, at the bottom of a resume, that's a good, um, really good way to look at it. But I do think, and I can remember, you know, being back to being in, in, in college and thinking that, you know, I needed to have volunteer experiences or you needed things on your resume to kind of stack it up. And I think, you know, However, you can not approach those opportunities as a checkbox and as something that you feel like you need to do, um, but as an opportunity to, again, kind of grow your network, grow your learning, grow what you're doing. Um, and that's something that I still try and continue to do. So the, the volunteer opportunities that I'm involved in now or the boards that I've sat on um, over the years are never really because I, I, you know, I was trying to seek out an opportunity or seek out a volunteer position. It was because I either knew somebody or, you know, there was um, an opportunity to learn or grow or listen or hear of something um, that I didn't know about. And that has either made me better in my current role or it's kind of helped me stay connected to people that I used to work with or that, I, um, that I've been connected with over the years. And so I do think it's important um, to get yourself out of your kind of silo of your nine to five and the people that you connect with every day, especially when it's in sports or, you know, even at Caribou where, um, or in a cult in what we're in right now, where you're seeing everybody on Zoom and you're seeing everybody in meetings and you're not, you know, connecting out of you know the silo that you're in. Um, the volunteer opportunities that I've had um, and continue to have, I think, not only fill my cup personally and you know touch work that I'm passionate about, but they you never know um, where those opportunities are going to lead to that next person that um, either not necessarily is going to provide you a job opportunity, but is going to connect you to um, you know, someone in your life that's going to be influential and that's going to be important. So when I think about volunteering and the why, like, yes, it's important to, you know, have a broad range of experience, but I do it for the, the, the experience that you're going to gain and, and what you're going to learn and where that could potentially lead you. I don't know if I fully answered your question, but um, <laughs> I don't think I, I think it's more just, you know, it's a part of kind of my personality and who I am to be involved in more than just what I'm doing um, for my my job. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And, you know, I went to a smaller college and I, when I go talk to those students, I always tell them, this is your, your experience to, to make it what you want. If you want to get yeah. involved in other things to make you stand out, you can do it. Uh, just taking advantage of people that want to help you and, and those resources. Uh, last question for you. You're the only one of us that's made it out of the sports industry. 
you know, what uh, about your time? <laughs> what about what your time with the twins helped you prepare you for other jobs outside of uh, the sports industry? Yeah, um, it's interesting. I didn't necessarily want to make it out. I think that I was so I was um, uh, in my role when I was I, I was a client services coordinator. So I think I, I explained that, you know, our role is working with all the sponsors of of Target Field and Caribou Coffee was one of the accounts that I worked on. So whether it was, you know, Fan Appreciation Weekend or what they did, I got to know their team well. I got to know their company and, and what they stood for in their brand. Um, it was one of my favorite accounts to work on. Um, I liked the people, I liked the culture. And um, when the position, you know, was available for the role that ran their partnerships, but kind of on the other side of, of the table, you know, I kind of reluctantly uh, was interested. I think it was really hard to leave the Twins organization, but I also knew um, that the experience that I had gained, you know, not only in my internship, but in my years with the organization, um, you know, had prepared, prepared me to make that, that jump to the brand side. Um, and then since then, so my first two years that I was with Caribou, my role was primarily to manage our sports partnerships, which felt like I had a pretty good grasp on in, in terms of my experience at the Twins. Um, but then since then, you know, my role right now um, encompasses our communications and our social media and our community efforts. And I wasn't an intern in any of those things. I didn't have a lot of training or experience to like prepare me for um, these different areas of the business. But what I do look back on and lean on now is, um, again, to echo Kobe, I think you're spot on in how you approach your internship of get to know other departments, get to know how the business actually operates and how the dots connect. And I think that that time that I had, even in my internship where I was, I was a sponge and I was meeting Kate and I was meeting Holly and I was understanding what people did um, is still with me in terms of how I approach my role now and how I try and connect the dots to like greater why behind the work that we're doing, whether it's sponsorship or in the community. So my time with the twins, um, you know, has definitely um, continues to be um, so much of the the training, whether it was my internship or not, or just the experience I had that um, led me to where I am right now. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Kayleen. I see some questions coming in. We'll finish up with Sierra and Kate and then kind of get to those, some of those questions. Sierra, you you hire what, almost 50 people annually. Uh, when you go through the interview process, you know, what are some things that stand out, stand out to you? Um, people that don't sound like others. And I know that sounds pretty cliche, but like you can tell me you're hardworking in a different way than tell me you're hardworking. Maybe you give me examples of how you're hardworking. Uh, the one thing that like stands out to me immediately, we all are probably baseball fans. We probably love the sport. That does not make you good for this role. That has nothing to do with this role. You being an intern, I mean, you're gonna watch zero of the game. You're not gonna be able to be a fan at all. So. That's like the one piece of advice I have for everyone. Don't lead with, I've been a baseball fan or a softball fan. I've played my whole life. Like, I just know I'd be good because of that. That's definitely not, that means nothing, to be honest, because you're, that has nothing to do with the role. You're now going to be behind the scenes, you know, doing other things that have nothing to do with actually throwing and catching the ball in the field. So don't lead with that. So that's my one, number one piece of advice. Don't lead with that. You might like the team and be passionate. That's great. What else can you bring to the table that the person to your left can't? hundred percent agree. And you, you kind of stole two things like hard work. People say that to me a lot. And I was like, okay, but everybody's definition of hard work means something different. Yeah, I see you at, you know, CHS field all the time. you are got your dog there. You're sleeping over some nights. It, you know, like hard work is different for everybody. Uh, and then the other thing is like you just mentioned, I'm a fan of the team. That's great. That's really good. But you can also tell me you're a fan of the team and your answers without actually telling me you're a fan of the team. It'll come through. It'll come through organically just as you talk about yourself. Um, one, one other thing that uh, we like to do is ask kind of an off the wall question, just like you said, to make yourself stand out. I bet you have a really good off the wall question that you ask people in your interviews. I actually ask a lot. There's usually, it's kind of a process. We'll go through your resume first. And then I just ask you the most random questions you've ever heard in your entire life. Um, I ask what your favorite word is. Don't say dedicated because that's no, nobody's favorite word. Why is dedicated your favorite word? You're just trying to give me a work ethic about you. Um, you know, if they were going to have their last meal tonight, what are you going to eat? If you could invite somebody on a talk show, who are you going to invite? Like, you just want to learn about these people 
because there, there are people on the resume that are fit for the job, but Kayleen and Toby were talking about this. It's a family when you work for a sports team and honestly, because you spend all your hours with them for a dedicated amount of time, you want the person that is qualified for the job, but you also want the right fit of a human being that's going to be there and will fit the brand and the culture. And one of the things that I actually really love to look for is I don't want the same type of person. It's not like we're trying to find the jock that loves sports that all wants to be there. No, I want all different walks of life because I want all different opinions because as a fan base, you don't get one type of fan. You get a whole bunch of different types. So you want the opinions around you to help like mitigate like what we're going to do during the games because I'll say first and foremost, I've never seen Star Wars. And Star Wars is one of the most popular nights here for whatever freaking reason. People love Star Wars. But I have to lean on others to be able to help me kind of plan that night out because whatever. I know there's Yoda something. Baby Yoda's cute, right? But if we get people of different opinions and like, but the ones that seem right fit in our brand and our culture, like that is how you actually become like a powerhouse and how you can grow your brand even more so and not be so pigeonholed in our thinking. So Star Wars night and cat night. Dude, that's, I don't, I don't like that night either. Yeah. I didn't think so. Uh, that's awesome. Those are really good. Those are really good perspectives. Uh, your, yours and my career path align quite a bit. I interned in 2007 and then I worked for the twins and three other organizations in part-time roles for for nine years. Uh, you worked at different organizations before really just finding this opportunity that really allows you to, to excel in your personality and who you are. What is it about that path that where you, what you learned about yourself, where it finally cl clicked in that this is where I'm going to be and, and how it worked out? Yeah. So like I stayed after my internship, I stayed on part-time with the twins. I was Back then, I don't think they're called this anymore, a fanatic. So each night, TC Bear had two people with him only that would help just help him do stuff around the ballpark. And I stayed on, um, honestly, because I loved my time with the Twins. And I really wanted to still be connected and network myself with everyone that was there. And, I mean, here's the thing. Working a Twins game, it was not work. It was like I was going to go get paid to, like, take fans of, like, pictures with TC Bear and fans and shoot a t-shirt gun and like, oh my gosh, like you're paying me to do this? Okay, great. Um, but it's, I fell in love with promotions and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So like you, I was a bartender until this position with the Saints opened up and um, I, and I worked part-time for the Twins. I never even applied for this job here. Uh, the assistant general manager at the time, he, they needed somebody about a month before the season started in 2013 he just called me up he's like what are you doing now I was like well that's a personal question but um he's like why don't you just come be our promotion manager for like the summer we'll see how it goes and then we'll go from there and here I am nine seasons later still here that's awesome I told I'm with you and when I talk to students back at my al alma mater I tell them that you know it people think just like everybody else has said in here that sports industry is, is glamorous. It's smaller than you think. And you really is come down as the right time and right place for a lot of these opportunities. And I share that with them, not to discourage them from the career path, but just to allow them to know the mentality, what you're going getting into and how uh, on point you have to be in every opportunity, just like you said, in every opportunity to network through these different opportunities. And, and eventually, you know, you put yourself in a, in a good position enough times, so the pieces are going to fall your way eventually. Um, so I appreciate your perspectives here. Thank you. For sure. All right, Kate, uh, wrapping up with you. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention about uh, Kate, she's a 2018 Creighton Durham Hall, uh, Hall of Famer alongside uh, Matt Burke, Chris Winkie, and Joe Maurer. Mm -hmm. And I set, set you up for that because I know you enjoy those accolades. And mm -hmm. secondly, uh, working as a team, you know, some of these individuals on a webinar uh, are, are in college or, or maybe in high school. Uh, getting ready for their career uh, a team sport how does a team sport prepare you prepare you for uh life uh, in in the corporate world i mean i think this isn't just specific to twins baseball or to the sports industry in general i mean it's the cliche thing but i think everyone on this panel has already spoken about it you know you walk into any organization 
And if it's a good organization and it's well-led, it's looking for people that are team players that want to be a part of something that's bigger than what they're actually doing. Um, so I think, you know, for me, I was fortunate enough to be a part of a lot of teams throughout my, you know, grade school, my youth time. And, and I had really great parents that kind of said that, set that example right off the bat. So just like, you're, it's greater than just you out there. So like you have a bad game. It's not about you. It's about the, the, what's happening with the team. And so that kind of learning throughout my entire, you know, youth and going even into college and being able to be a college athlete, like I coming from that place, it allows you to be really selfless and just, you know, it isn't just about what's happening with you or what's going on. And it's going to be about how do we, as Kobe said, like, how do you make somebody better next to you? Um, and so that mentality can be translated to any industry and any organization. It's not specific to the twins or to sports, but um, it's really, it really, uh, if you can walk into an organization with that type of mentality, I think it really uh, helps you be successful in your career. Well, one thing that you mentioned uh, in your introduction that I thought was interesting is that you had an internship in an area that you, and then went to a different department. I get asked a lot of times, like, okay, if I get an internship here, can I go transfer to someplace else? Uh, and it's kind of a unique question. You did it. Uh, what What do you think about your internship or who, what, uh, who, what you did your first year allowed you to stand out and get additional opportunities? Um, by the way, Holly, you should have picked somebody who was way more energetic than Kobe. He's kind of just like a wet noodle out there, but really not, not smiling or not energetic at all. But he is the epitome of kind of what I tried to like be when I was way back when. Um, I just did everything that anybody asked of me. Um, you know, when I started in sales, I'm not a good salesperson. Uh, I like somebody tells me no, and I hang the phone up right away and tell them to have a good day. So I don't really push back on it. Um, but what I could do was do all of the other stuff that I wasn't on the phone. And that wasn't the role anyways. Like I was just doing all the stuff to help people get to, or do their jobs better. And so I just set myself apart in the sense of just like, I, I think I was at work late actually one day when they asked me to come up to, to work in the baseball department. And, and maybe it was things like that, like just staying over the, I probably clocked out. Sorry, I shouldn't say that, Holly. Uh, I was staying over my hours, but um, I just did everything that, that was asked of me or I looked for things that could be done or processes that could have been better and tried to, you know, make a mark on it. And so I think that, um, that attitude and that kind of work ethic set me apart from some of the other, the, the large group of our 10 interns at the, that year, yeah. seven interns that year, uh, and allowed me to move up into the baseball department. It's a, really a rare occurrence to be honest with you, but this question I get asked almost in every year about, you know, interning in one spot and moving over. And um, I think your, your personality and your hard work is a testament to that. Um, just the last question, just to be blunt, you know, sports can be thought of, especially your department, it's kind of the old boys club. Um, I, I per personally think that the Minnesota Twins have done an awesome job of uh, giving everybody an equal opportunity. This panel is a testament to it. Um, I work, find myself working with more women than I do do men. But for you, like when you get for the females on, on this panel listening, what's kind of your advice to them to having success in this industry? I mean, I think the first and foremost is that you need to have the attitude that there's nothing that you can't do. I mean, I guess that's the, that's kind of the biggest thing. I, I think, yes, our industry has changed drastically and the Minnesota twins are very well represented with males and females on, on, on the business and baseball side. Baseball, definitely there's a larger discrepancy um, because we do represent you know, the on-field coaching staff and some of the more traditionally male uh, held roles. Um, and so I always just try to tell people like it, there's nothing, there's nothing anyone can't do. I mean, you know, as long as you put your mind to it kind of, it, there's really no reason why a woman can't be a coach or can't be a manager or can't be a trainer. I would say there's probably not a great chance there's going to be a woman major league baseball player right now, but you never know. Um, so there's really no role that can't be held by women. And and one of my goals as being a female in the baseball operations side of our industry is really to try to show that through representation. I think representation really matters. And so the more women we can bring into this organization, the more women that we can bring into this industry, this sport, uh, the better, because it just shows other young women out there, other young ladies out there that that it's that you're doing it's doable. Um, and so, and we've done a great job. We, you know, if you look through our baseball operations group now, we've got 
women trainers and women strength coaches and women analysts. And we, you know, we have a female working in our scouting department. And so there's, there are women represented in almost every, every department under the baseball op, ops uh, umbrella. So I would just, I would just say, take a chance. Like there's nothing that you can't do. So why not, why not interview or why not sign up for the job? Yeah. Well said. Definitely. Uh, let's get to some of these. I know we got about 20 minutes left. There's about 25 questions. So I'm going to try and get through some of these questions. Holly, you might be able to answer some of these better than I will. As they're, they're kind of more rudimentary questions, but um, what do, what if uh, there's a college student and you have classes through May, how, how does intern work? If it starts in January, I'll be in school. Uh, I, I, I can just, talk speak to that because we had two interns this year that were in school um we will work around your schedule uh, ideally we want both of us to grow during this time you to help our program uh, but then also for you to to accomplish and if you're you are, are awarded the internship uh we'll we'll be accommodating to make sure that you can do well in school as as well as do well in internship um, obviously that comes back to hard work that we talked about before but uh, if you're willing to do it we're willing to to work around your, your needs. Um, are there specific mentorship or coaching programs in place within the organization? Kobe, I'm gonna let you talk about this because there are some more recent things that the Twins organization has done to allow you to connect to different, different people within an organization. Uh, could you speak to that from, from, your, from this year? Yeah, we have seminars where you can like talk to higher ups and stuff, but then also you have your, your like team. So I'm in CR. And on my first week at CR, every single person set up a meeting with me. And so they became my mentors. So I assume that happens for each department. But so you get a whole bunch of opportunity to have mentors and help throughout your internship. And then also you'll meet new people. And like, for example, sitting here in community, which is awesome, apply for community. And you want to be in baseball ops, like you have the opportunity to talk with Kate or talk with Josh Ruffin and they'll tell you about baseball ops. So there is plenty of opportunity to, for mentorships. If you're curious, you just have to sometimes ask, ask someone, just send them an email. Yeah, Kobe got the capstone project too, which allows, oh, which yeah. forces you opportunity to connect with other departments as well and kind of more think tank and, and real problems that the twins are having that you can weigh in on as well. Yeah, so we also capstone's... have. Oh, sorry, Kobe. We also have a weekly check-in system called Standout, where you have to check in with your supervisor weekly. Um, we put what your prior priorities are for that week, what they think your priority should be, and then you can comment back and forth. So it's not like we just send you out there and good luck. You know, we're, we're always there to kind of mentor and kind of pave the way. And if you have questions or you know, stand out is a good way where we can stay on track with that. This next question is, uh, do you have any expectations about your career path that you found to be different from reality, whether good or bad? Kaylee, I'm going to give you that. You give you that one. Hard. Um, different than I expected. Um, I, yes. I mean, I think that what I found different than what I expected is that from both my years with the twins and with Caribou Coffee, um, I I can honestly say this, and I'm not making this up. There's rare, there has not been a day where I've dreaded going into work. Um, for my first eight years, my office was Target Field. For my last four, um, it's been some of this kitchen, but like I've gotten to connect with really amazing people and I've worked with really incredible people and that speaks to culture. And I think that I, I didn't, I didn't realize how important culture and people were um, to my career and to what I wanted to do. I think that it's easy to think about the area that you want to go into, the work that you want to do. Um, but I think I didn't realize how much the people and the connections and the culture of where you work actually frame your love and fill your cup more than the work itself. So maybe that's kind of cheesy, but that would be maybe something that I, I didn't expect maybe entering my internship year in 2010. Sierra, this next one's for you. We're talking about twins internships here today, but someone wants to ask about affiliates with minor league affiliates, including St. Paul Saints. What can you tell us about St. Paul Saints? I mean, I wasn't going to shamelessly plug our internship program during I'm setting you up. trying to promote twins internship. But yes, thanks for asking. We do offer internships, both game days, part-time. 
and full time. So kind of behind the scenes more a little bit, you know, you're working the hundred hours a week that we work on the full time internship and the game day you're coming in and you're just the reason people come to Saints games is the fun. That's what you're helping execute. So a um, little similar, not as similar timeline. We usually post ours in November or December. You are hiring in January, February, but um, I will say that like I've been through this process a lot and I went through it as myself. I worked as a Saints intern so I could stand out to be a Twins intern. And a lot of our interns, I've had a lot of game day interns or full-time interns that literally the next season, they are a Twins intern. Um, because I would like to say there's a mutual respect of, they see that on the resume, they know they put in the hours and they can work hard, um, but also have fun while they do it. And so it's a good stepping stone. and. That's the advice I give so many people is it never be above or below any internship that you may or may not get to have because the best thing in this industry is networking and the more places you can get experience. Experience is great, but meeting the people at each spot. So now you have a handful of people you can talk to at the Saints. You have a handful you can talk to the Twins. Maybe you go on and work for the Timberwolves for their season. Like it only will help you win those opportunities. Like Kayleen said, I mean, it's the right place, right time, but when those opportunities do present themselves, it'll happen maybe a little bit easier for you because you put in the effort and the work to get there. Now, I don't think you said this year, but when, when are uh, St. Paul Saints doing hiring interns? Um, usually November, December-ish. Got it. Yes. Nora Lund's got some good questions in here. She writes, Kobe shared about what motivates him. Thanks, Kobe. Would other panel members be willing to share what drives them and or where they find purpose in their careers? Kate, would you care to answer that one? Uh, sure. I am similar to Kobe. I am a competitive person. Um, so I think what drives me a little bit is, you know, obviously we're in a sports world, so there's competition out on the field. But I just think in general, there there's healthy competition within the organization. We're always just trying to be, especially on the baseball side of the of our industry, like we're always trying to be the next, you know, best or win the World Series and figure out how to do things better. Um, so that really kind of pushes me every day. Um, and also then I just, I actually just really enjoy helping people. Um, uh, that does sound somewhat cheesy, but I think like in my role uh, where I am, I get to the opportunity to help a lot of different people, uh, whether it's new drafted players coming into the organization or the person sitting next to me in my office, um, I can kind of help in all different areas. And so that's a, that's a big driver for me as I've always found a little passion in doing things for other people. And uh, which also talks to what Kayleen and you spoke to about earlier about volunteer, volunteerism and kind of putting things on your resume. I was, I'm was i still a volunteer with the Muscular Dystrophy Foundation and I work with a lot of different organizations. And so I think that's, a, that's another driver for me. It's just always kind of being there in service kind of, if you will. I think one thing, one theme that you will hear on here is how important relationships are and connections are, um, no matter what entity you're in, um, just building that respect for your teammates and being willing, willing to help them out. Kate, there's another question from, for you. When you have an idea and you want to present it to leaders in baseball ops, what type of planning goes into pitching it to them? <laughs> uh, it just depends on if they're at lunch or not, um, usually. Um, it's, it's uh, I think Kobe spoke a little bit about this, but it's a pretty open door organization. Um, yes, there are some steps in, in order to get maybe to the highest levels, but specifically on the baseball ops side of things, our interns present to to our leaders all the time actually and they're doing similar things like the capstone projects right now and um so it's a really Derek Feldy and Thad Levine when they came in have kind of created this culture of there is no real closed doors unless it's a COVID world and we have to have masks but there really are no closed doors and and any question is not a stupid question so just come and ask it and and really, it, that filters down all the way from the top, you know, our assistant GMs are, and hopefully throughout the organization. So, uh, sorry, it's not more exciting or more sexy, but there's really no presentation that needs to really be made. I mean, obviously, they want to see work done. Um, if you have a theory out there on some sort of what's going on in our game or how we can make somebody better or a player better, but uh, you're going to have to show the work. But really, in terms of trying to pitch it, you just sit down in their office and you, you talk to them about it. So. 
Kate just kind of talked about a process that maybe is a little more confidential. I'm going to throw it over to Sierra with a similar question because your your group thinks they're not confidential at, at all. You guys podcast them all the time. Uh, can you answer that question from uh, a Saints perspective? Uh, I, I it's pretty similar to like Kate. It's very we have a very open office. Like we don't even have cubicles. Like there's no walls separating anybody, and so but that helps us in the whole line of communication and brainstorming and ideas. It's like, it's very annoying when people just overhear you having a conversation and that sparks them to feel like they're involved in the conversation then they can insert themselves, but it, it works. It's that's how all of our weird quirky ideas, while I would love to take credit for all of the successful ones, I can't necessarily, I'm just more or less the person that executed. It's a whole step effort for all of those things. And we have a very, our GM, he says he uses an open door policy. A fan could walk in tomorrow morning at 9.30 and say, I want to talk to Derek and he'll open his door and be like, okay, hey, come on in, like, and welcome them in. So very similar to what Kate said, we don't really have a structured process. If you have an idea, bring it up if you want us to hear about it. And um, hopefully you know, you're not, you don't feel like you're not allowed to, like whether you're an intern or whether you've been with the Saints for 20 years, everyone's voice is the same amount heard. There's a, a question from an anonymous attendee about timeline of the, the interview intern process. I'm going to answer this just from our broadcast perspective, because I think we take a lot of pride in the way we go about trying to help you grow during the season. You know, if you were to get hired with us in the broadcast, the first chunk of we break it up into thirds the first third is there are no dumb questions we're here to help help you learn help you get integrated as much as possible and we want you to ask all the questions that you know that kobe talked about um the second part of that process is we want to see you start walking and contributing on our own and i hate to say this but there are dumb questions there in that phase and i say that because if we're still answering the first question questions that we answered in week one then either we haven't done a good job teaching you or you haven't put in the effort to listen and we want you to grow. Like I keep saying, you're going to help us be, make us a better product. And at the end of the day, we hope we set you up for the future as well. Uh, so we hope that you, you're contributing, coming in, bringing up topics like ideas like Kate and Sierra just mentioned. And then that third phase, we call it earned responsibility. So if you've done phase one and two really well, then we're going to come to you and say, uh, you know, great job. You've, you've done an awesome job this summer. What do you want to do? that to set you apart or experience and we'll try we'll try and create that in that opportunity for you to experience something that you think really either just fits your your personality or your future career um and so we call that earn responsibility and and that's basically how we kind of treat the nine months or the 12 months of the baseball season kind of breaking it up into those those three areas uh there there was a question about uh, if you were working in as your uh, keenly, I'm gonna give you this one. Uh, if you were working in your role as a twins intern again, uh, knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? Um, good question. I think maybe not what I would do differently. What I maybe wish I would have understood is that if you're passionate about working in sports or you love working in sports, you don't need to necessarily work for a sports team. Um, so I think I didn't realize all the different businesses and agencies and companies and relationships that touch the organization that um, are just as connected to to sports and to some of the things that might fuel you. So um, I would have maybe expanded my like vision a bit to, to you know, consider opportunities or consider um, different internships or a different path to get me to an internship with the twins or into my next role. Um, but if you're interested in sports, there, you can work on the brand side, you can work with agencies, you can work with partners. There's just a lot more opportunities than looking at the five or six pro sports teams that are in town and the Saints, of course. Um, but I think that I didn't, I didn't realize that as much until I think a couple of years into my, my time with, with the team. Kobe, same question for you. You're going to start this year over again. Now that you've been through it, what are you going to do differently? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> What would I do differently? Wow. I would stop and breathe and look outside the window more. Because sometimes I feel like I'm going a little too fast in my brain. And like, I'll mess up on my email maybe like with a spelling error. Like if I just stopped and breathed a little bit more and looked at the beautiful baseball field, you know, <laughs> as errors would happen. But 
that's probably about it. Uh, Holly, I'm going to give you this question because this person specifically asked, they're in a career field already. Uh, do we hire uh, interns that are in their career field who maybe want to change a career? Because I know that you've done that. I was going to say, absolutely, that's me. Um, I was out working, had a full-time position, full benefits, had it was all set, right? And I just didn't feel right. So I'm like, well, what do I want to do? Actually, my husband's like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And I said, I don't know, work for the twins. And he's like, well, how do you go about doing that? And so I figured internship would be the best way. And that's um, where, where it took me. I quit a full-time benefit job to take an internship here at the twins in ballpark operations. And now I'm in HR. So that's two, three pivots right there. And I mean, just because you have a plan doesn't always mean it's going to, it's going to go, you know, straight. And sometimes those curves are what leads you to the, to the best things. So I got two questions about knowing Spanish. So I'm going to ask Kate, cause I believe you are in our Spanish classes here at, at target field. How important is Spanish to, uh, to your day-to-day -day operations? Um, you know, it varies in, in different roles, but it's a, it, it's one of those things that does set you apart on your resume. So I will say that, you know, we on the baseball ops and, uh, side of it, just because we do deal with the players and our Dominican Academy and our Venezuelan scouts and, um, you know, it, it's beneficial. So it's, it definitely sets you apart on your resume if you come in having being bilingual. And actually at this point, if you knew Japanese, that would also help too. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's big. I mean, I don't, obviously I'm not fluent in it. Um, but we, uh, we, we are seeing more and more of our interns or slash fellowships that, uh, do speak both languages and, and it is beneficial. So especially with the possibility of an international draft coming up, I would say it's a, it's a real, it's a real big, uh, big thing to have on your resume at this point. Uh, Sierra, I'm going to ask, I'm going to give this one to you. I'm going to try and answer it from a twins perspective first, and then have you answer it from a state's perspective. What does a typical, typical day look as a marketing intern, uh, kind of your field? Um, I'm in the marketing department. Our broadcast internships are completely different uh, because you're working game broadcasts. You know, we, you come in and you help us prepare what's on a pregame show. What do you think that uh, fans want to hear about tonight's game? Uh, then you're helping us execute it. You're going to interview on-field personnel, players to help put those storylines together. Uh, there's a lot of writing involved. There's a lot of uh, interviews involved, um, those sort of things. But within marketing, there's, you know, promotional items, which you're going to talk about in a minute and, and picking out those items uh, and, and prepping those items. There's, uh, you know, social media is part of our department. There's, there's uh, graphics, there's video editors, there's content generators. There's all sorts of things. Sarah, from, from your standpoint, marketing intern, what's the day-to-day -day look like from you? Yeah, so I actually tell people that marketing a lot of for us happens in the off season. The marketing is meeting with partners, planning our ad buys, you know, when are we running radio ads, TV ads. The summertime, it, all those plans are already in place. So a lot of the stuff during the summer is, like you said, straight promotions. It's helping um, assist with script writing for the night, for whoever's on the microphone that night. What are they saying? What are they talking about? We have different groups coming out that we need to welcome. You know, a lot of it's the same and a lot of the skeleton of the scripts are the same, but each night it's completely different of what order we're doing things in and who's going to be here and all of that stuff. So it's helping with all the promotional stuff. And then on the same side, the promotions intern also is in charge of all of the game day interns that are coming in to work just the game. So they're the ones scheduling interns as well as giving them what their duties are going to be that night. So that's kind of a project that I have them work on, but it's all of the fun app, anything that, that doesn't have to do with the concession stand or the baseball game itself, that is what helping out on a marketing side day-to-day -day, um, leading up to the game is. I'm going to wrap up with one quick nuts and bolts question and Kaylee, you're going to get the last question. Um, the, I got a couple questions about, do you hire somebody with outside non-sports experience? Absolutely. The twins have been really big on that. You've seen that in the baseball department, which I know a lot of people are asking about from here, uh, but then also throughout the front office too. Um, you know, just like the theme of this, this webinar has said, you know, we're looking for a, a different, uh, Asira actually said this, if you can bring a different perspective or a unique element to the table where, you know, you don't have five people in the room all thinking alike, you know, you're really not getting pushback and you're not making it better. You get that differences of opinion that really helps us grow 
Uh, and ultimately, that's what we're hoping that we can do together. Uh, Kayleen, the question is about working. How often in your internship are you working with by yourself and then working with teams? And I'm asking you this because I called you the connector earlier. So 99.9% .9 of the time you're working with other people. Um, I would say, I mean, you have your own individual duties, but very rarely, especially in your internship, do you not have another human right next to you that you can bounce ideas off of and like help grow what you're working on. So, I mean, there's a lot of individual work and responsibilities, but you always have people around you. So I think that is um, a big part of sports. It's a big part of um, the culture at the Twins um, and would be a part of any position, whether you're in IT or you're in marketing or you're in broadcast, you're going to be surrounded by people that are going to be a sounding board for you. Constantly. All right, I'm going to turn it back over to Holly. Uh, she can remind you of where you can find these internships. Uh, thank you, everybody on this panel. This is an awesome discussion. Uh, I knew it would be a lot of fun, uh, but geez, the hour went by really fast. Thanks for sharing your experiences. I, I learned something today, too, so thank you. Great. And so again, thank you, panelists. I really appreciate it. It brought back a lot, of, a lot of memories of working with you all. So and hiring some of you too, which was really fun to see full circle. But um, I'm going to stay on for, you know, probably about another half hour and answer just the nuts and bolts questions that you guys have out there about our internship program. So if our panelists do want to drop off, that's completely fine. If you want to sit and listen to me ramble on, that's great too. But um, so yeah, so I'll start digging in um, to questions that we have in the in the Q and A. But again, thank you all for joining, and we will um, get going on some of these questions. Okay, so um, one of the questions was, do I need a college degree? Um, you know, not necessarily finished. We have some people who are still working. Um, towards their degree. So it's not like you have to come in with the degree. Um, you know, as far as you don't typically have high school students that are in this internship program. If, if you know, someone wants to be involved with, with the twins at an, at an earlier age, we say to go for some of our part-time positions and kind of get exposure that way. Um, just our internships are a little more robust so typically they are, you know, in, in school, in college or postgraduate. Um, okay. Most of the internships are 40 hour per week. Is it difficult to balance schoolwork and the internship on top of each other? So if you look through, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send our brochure out to everybody who had registered for this webinar. So you're all going to get, um, you know, that full listing. So you'll be able to see kind of the, the timeline and what their hour requirements are. A lot of times if people are still in school, they're usually, you know, just finishing up. Maybe their school load isn't as, isn't as, as strong or, you know, difficult. Um, so they can kind of balance the two things. So, all right. Um, what should I do in regards to applying to the twins or any internship program um, in baseball and um, if you're a junior currently in college? Well, first off, for us, you, you know, you kind of have to be in the area. We don't do any remote um, internships. So you kind of have to be finishing up school here in the Minneapolis area. Um, to be able to, you know, apply because we do need you here. And like I said, a lot of these internships go almost full year. So you have to be available to um, do that. If you look on a lot of the internships, it'll say, you know, 40 hours required, 20 hours during school, 40 hours during the summer. Those are going to be a little more flexible for individuals who are students currently um, because, you know, we can work, those that say 20 can work around a school schedule a little bit better. Um, some of those that are 40 hour per week, maybe they have a lot of game day duties or, you know, they really need someone there um, for the 40 hours, which might be hard to juggle with, with school. Most of our interns, I would say, are postgraduate or just finishing up. So they have a little more um, wiggle room with their schedule. And I kind of touched on the part time if you're, you know, um, in high school still. How important is it to have previous experience in the field that you're applying to? 
um, for the internships, you know, I wouldn't say you, it's an internship. So, I mean, this is your chance to, you know, learn about that particular field. But, you know, we get around 2,500 applicants for the, the internships. So it can get a little um, competitive. Um, but like I think Drew had said, how he works from the resume from the bottom up, a lot of times we'll do that. If it's resumes that are just, you know, school's the same, um, experience is the same, we'll look and see what kind of extracurriculars. Because working in baseball, you have to be able to spread yourself all over. You can't just be in one spot doing one thing. You're gonna be asked to do many things. You're gonna be asked to pivot. And, you know, if you had your day planned this way, and all of a sudden a player's here and needs to be, you know, escorted down somewhere. I mean, you have to be able to, to pivot. Um, and, you, and it's like that, I think, in all sports organizations. So, um, you know, but if you're going for, you know, let's say um, computer science, a, 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 you know, technology internship, I would say it's pretty important to have ex some experience or some background in that. And um, that's gonna give you a much better chance for those more technical positions. Um, the timeline for the interview process. Um, so it's, like I said, it's pretty robust because we have about 45 internships and we like to really give a good month. Like I said, post it on Monday and we'll bring them down October 30th. So we really leave them open for a good month to get as many resumes as we can in there. So how our process works is someone applies. Um, we look through all those resumes. If we feel like they're a good fit, we will send them a link to do a vid cruder, and that's a video interview where you do it on your own time. The questions get popped up and it records your answer. And then we watch those. So that's the first layer. Then the second layer, we watch all those, then we decide, you know, again, who we want to move on. And then we either do a face-to-face -face or a Zoom interview for kind of that final um, layer. So we usually try to do those, um, you know, around mid-November, and then we will, um, I'm trying to think timeline here. Usually we're ready to name interns around um, Thanksgiving time. So if, we, if everything's running smoothly, we usually will be able to, to name interns around Thanksgiving. So a little bit long uh, process, we just wanna make sure that we get, we get the best people in for these roles. Um, the question about internships just for summer months, we don't typically have any just summer internships. Um, like I said, all of the, the timelines are listed um, for um, each internship if you look at when they're posted and on the brochure that I'll be sending you. If you don't get an internship, is it detrimental to your hopes of working for the Twins in the future? No, I, we, I would say, um, I think the last time we took a look, um, maybe four, I think it was like 40% of our full-time staff right now. Our full-time staff is about 225 individuals. Um, I'd say 35 to 40, I'd have to go back and recheck those numbers were interns at one point. So no, it's, it's not detrimental. I mean, obviously it's gonna help you get in front of people, they see you. Like I said, with my um, internship experience, I was a ballpark ops intern, but now I'm in HR. And that just comes from, you know, people dealing with you, you know, working in the organization, seeing what your work ethic is like and knowing like, hey, I know I can depend on this person, um, even if, you know, it's, it's not in that particular field. Um, from Canada, out of the country, wondering if that'd be a barrier. Nope, if you're um, able to work in the United States, that is not a barrier, so. Okay. Uh, do recent graduates who have been in the professional workforce for nine to 10 months still qualify for internship fellowship in addition to current students? Absolutely. So I don't wanna keep just harping back on myself, but like I said, I was, I was postgraduate, I was in a career field and I, I came an intern. So, um, so I wasn't, you know, the typical intern age, but we, don't, I wouldn't say we have a typical age. We've had pretty much broad range of um, experiences and 
and backgrounds. So what are some of the core values of potential twin turn to best fit the twins family? So I will go back to, I don't know if I have it up here in my, in my cube, but our, our motto for the twins is passion, heart, hustle, and fun. And you know, those are the really the four pillars that we, we concentrate on big time around here. Um, passion, you know, just passion for the game, um, your position, what you do, um, heart, and that's kind of what we, we show through you know, our volunteer and um, opportunities and what we do in the community. So those are, it's a big, it's a big thing for the twins family. We are family owned by the Polats. And, you know, that is something that I find very, very attractive to working here because you can tell just by how everyone reacts and works with each other. I feel like it's a family. Um, so that's what I kind of like about it. And then hustle. I mean, you got to be moving. Everything around here is fast paced. I mean, right now with the season being done, um, you know, it's a little bit more slow, but we're getting ready already for spring training next year and getting everything set. And then just fun, like we, there's no shortage of it, I guess. And I don't want to be cliche, but we are kind of work hard, play hard. Um, people know what they have to do and they work hard to do it, but um, I don't think anyone really takes himself too seriously um, around here. What resumes do you immediately disregard when you look at them? Um, if I'm looking at, you know, 2,500 resumes, which we often do, if there's spelling errors, if there's anything where, to me, it didn't feel like you paid, you know, attention to detail, they pretty much get thrown out immediately. So you have so many resources out there to take a look at resumes. If you're still in college, you have your career center, you have roommates, you have parents, you have, you know, teachers, just have someone else look at it. Don't think, boom, slap it together, that's good to go. Um, have a few people read through it because I guarantee you they're going to find something um, I once had and don't rely on spell check. <laughs> I will say that too. We've had people come through with bachelorettes of science before um, because bachelorette makes it right through the spell check, but obviously you're not, um, you know, a bachelorette of, of science. So like I said, make sure you have um, somebody take a look at that. Every person who looks at a resume is going to have different things that they like and different things they don't like. Um, me personally, I like one page um, resumes where you can keep it concise, tailor it to what you're applying for. Don't just, you know, throw everything on there um, and just make sure that you're really, you know, taking the time to be intentional with your resumes. Um, during the internship, how much time do you spend by yourself compared to in teams? Um, it's a lot of team work, but they're, I would say 50-50. You're going to be in a team working with other interns, working with other departments, but there is a lot of stuff that it depends solely on you. If you don't do it, you know, the game might not go on that day. And, I, and I'm not joking, like if we don't have, you know, a starting lineup or anything ready to go, um, it'll delay everything. So our interns get a lot of responsibility as far as that's concerned. Um, and I'm just gonna look through quickly here just to see what we have. So bear with me while I read through. Um, where do we apply for the twins internships? Is that the same place where we can apply for the Saints? So, the, so each affiliate is going to post their own positions on their own websites. So even though, you know, they're an affiliate of the twins, uh, we won't necessarily post their positions on our website. And again, ours is twinsbaseball.com slash job opportunities, or you go to the Minnesota Twins main page, scroll all the way down, and it's, um, you click on job opportunities. And I'm gonna send everybody all that information who had signed up for this webinar um, if your email um, is correct on there. Okay. All right, I said bear with me. Um, what's the difference between an internship and a fellowship? So our fellowships, 
um, there are you know, typically in our baseball department and typically those people do have experience coming into there with a lot of um, background um, technical um, things. So that's really the only difference between the, the fellowship and the internship. Um, a few of you have asked if you know you can reach out to people on LinkedIn. I would say absolutely. Go ahead and reach out. Um, I'm just going to double check on where where they would like if they have a, if you guys have any specific questions for anyone um, in particular. I'm just going to double check with panelists, see where they want to, those to be directed, and then I'll include that in the email sent to you with the with the brochure. Mm -hmm. The computer science, is there anything else besides um, information technology? You know, if you if you really want just the computer science technology, really the, that internship is probably the best suited. Um, I mean, there's some other technical positions, but they're more on the creative side. Um, there's some analytic positions too in our business strategy and analytics department, but it just depends on, you know, what what portion that you'd be interested in. Uh, volunteer opportunities, we have them all the time. So our community relations department will always send them out. Um, and I know for me personally, we in HR, we allow our intern to, to do as many as, as she would like. So definitely a big proponent of, of volunteering and spreading the, the twins name and brand. Um, how would one get into the analytics department um, and the player development? Um, you know, that I I'm just going to say flat out our baseball internships and fellowships get uh, probably flooded the most with resumes. Those are, you know, the most attractive ones. So the competition is pretty fierce for those. And I always tell people, you know, take a look at what else there, there are because like I said, just because you're an intern in marketing or ballpark operations or maintenance doesn't mean that that's where you're stuck for, for life. Um, like the example I gave earlier, it's one of those things where, you know, maybe they see you and you maybe you go talk to them, set up a time to, to chat with them while you're an intern here. And that's how it gets, you know, started. So um, baseball is very competitive, um, so it, it, we do get the most resumes for those. I always say try and look at the internships that might be, you know, the road less traveled to if you really want to break into into the sports field. So, um, what training programs do the twins offer? So. Um, if you're an employee or a, an intern with us, we have what we call LinkedIn Learning, and you can, you know, have um, you can go ahead and and take as many of those classes as you'd like. Um, we usually will open up some of the training classes to to interns, but um, sometimes those are afforded just for full time, like the Spanish class that Kate was referring that we were referring to. Um, I actually participated in those classes too. They're, they're pretty amazing. So, um, but that's something, you know, it just depends on, on the year, really. Every year is pretty different. Um, at this time, no remote internships, um, as far as that question is concerned. You never know with the changing climate what's going to happen, but um, we are pretty much here. Um, Is it possible to still work a part-time job or something to afford to live in Minnesota with all the bills? Um, if you can find the, the part-time job, I know a couple interns have done it. It's, it's a juggle, but if their schedules, we had two interns two years ago who were able to you know, set up their schedules just fine to have part-time jobs and work with us. But we would just say that you know, what we, if there's a game or something that will come first, and that part-time job would probably have to you know, come in, come in second. 
Uh, we do have a legal department, but no internships um, for that at this time. They're kind of restructuring a little bit. Not saying there wouldn't be someone um, or something in the future, but right now, no. Is there any compensation? Yes, currently right now our interns um, are at $15 per hour. Um, and yeah, we, and you know, if, if you do need school credit for your internship, we will, you know, fill out any forms that you need. If you, if you check all the boxes for what your college needs for our college credit, we, we do take that, but we, all of our internships are paid. Um, the question about Kobe being hired on, or is he continuing to be an intern? So his internship goes through December. A lot of the interns who are still working right now, um, a few of them are finishing up. Typically we go two weeks after the last game was played. And our last game was on Sunday, unfortunately. So um, some of the interns are wrapping up at this point, but um, some will stay on through December. Um, at any point, though, they can, if we have any full-time positions, they can apply for those. Will some interns be required to go to spring training? Um, no, not any that are here in Minnesota. We do have two Florida um, internships, and then some of the baseball ones who are at the Fort Myers affiliate will be down there already. Those are, I believe, in our video um, department. So you can take a look. There's two, you have to be living in, in Fort Myers, but no, none of the Minnesota interns will really, will travel to spring training. I think I hit some of these, so bear with me as I scroll through. Um, as far as majors are concerned with, with college students, um, I think a big misnomer is that you need a sports management major to work in sports, and that is not at all true. Uh, we want people who, you know, are, are well versed in the field. So if you're going to be in marketing, yeah, of course, we're going to prefer a, a marketing major. Um, you know, if you're in, you know, I always keep bringing up IT, but obviously if you're in IT, we want an IT background. So I think, you know, a big misnomer is that you need sport management and that is that's not at all true sport management um, degrees are fine um, they just happen to be more um, you get a little bit of everything so we get a lot of interns coming or the intern prospects coming to us and saying you know i just want to work in sports i'll work anywhere and i'm like okay well we've got a you know a maintenance and you, you want to work in that so my biggest thing is you know, take a look at everything that we have and try and figure out, you know, is this something that that you want to, to do, you feel like you would be good in. Don't come to us and have us tell you what you would be good in um, because, you know, we, we don't really know. Everyone, um, I think someone said that too, don't lead in with them. I'm a huge Twins fan. That's awesome. We do, but you know, you wouldn't go to, I always like to bring up this one, you wouldn't go to General Mills and in your interview be like, I just love Cheerios. I'm a huge Cheerios fan. It's been my whole life and that's why I want to work here. So I mean, it sounds kind of ridiculous like that. And I know it's not completely apples to apples, but um, that might give you an idea of, you know, what we hear all the time. Um, a is a typical day eight to five. And here in sports, if you've never worked in sports, there really is no typical day. Um, so people who are used to just having that eight to five, nine to five, and then punch out and leave, probably not a great fit for those individuals because you know you could be here in the morning for a setup for something, um, have you know um, something to do in the afternoon, have to work the game. Oh wait, the game's in extra innings now but you have to stay for the entire thing. But, um, you know, you could be here until sometimes, you know, one in the morning if the, if the game is going late, depending on your responsibilities. So, I mean, yes, our office hours typically here 
you know, if someone walks up to the twins window, it's eight to five, um, eight to you know, eight to five. But as far as working is concerned, just depends on your position. Um, all the internships are at the same pay rate. Um, what do you look for in a cover letter? So a cover letter for me, and like I said, all recruiters are gonna be a little bit different. But for me in a cover letter, I want you to show what your resume can't. Um, I just don't want the cover letter to be a regurgitation of your resume because I'm looking at your resume, I can read your resume. In that cover letter, tell me what that resume can't show me. Um, so, you know, personality things, you know, maybe elaborating on something on your resume that, you know, your bullet point or whatnot. Um, show me that you have done a little bit of research on your position in the, in the um, organization. All right. So I think I've um, flown through. I'm sorry if I missed your question, but I try to get through as many as I could. And I'm just, for those that are still out there, um, if you have any last questions you want to throw up quick, otherwise I'll put the, um, oh, I should check the chat here. Hold on one second for anybody who didn't go through the Q&A. Um, is there a place that I can get the recording? I'm planning on putting the recording on our twins YouTube page. Um, so it will be in a YouTube link on our twins page. You just Google Minnesota twins YouTube channel and um, it will be up on there. Um, I'll send Like I said, I'll contact speakers for their info. All the rest are thank yous, which are very much appreciated. So if applying to multiple internships, would it be appropriate to write different cover letters for each? Um, not necessarily. I mean, if it's if they're all pretty similar as far as the internship is concerned, I wouldn't be too hung up on the cover letter. Um, but if you feel you know like you really want to, um, if, they're, if the internships are a little bit different, maybe go ahead and, and tailor them for each one. Right. So last thing, I will just um, share this one more time up here so you guys can see it. I will send it, but again, um, you just go out to our website and apply. Um, I am gonna, like I said, take a, a inventory of who was on the webinar today and kind of cross check to see if we have anyone um, apply off the webinar. So we'll have some maybe some familiar names come through. Just page through. Um, but yeah, if you do have any specific questions or something pops up that we didn't you didn't we didn't get a chance to answer your question, you can email at HR support at twinsbaseball.com and you know we'll be happy to help you out with anything that we couldn't take care of um, today. All right, well, thanks again. Best of luck to everybody. Like I said, hope to see your um, resumes come through and reach out to the HR support at twinsbaseball.com if you have any questions. Thank you very much.